Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Martin Pavey here, another fantastic video in store for you. A slightly more poignant and serious one perhaps today. But before I go on, please do like and subscribe and share to spread all of these important messages in these videos. And please do leave me a comment below if anything resonates with you and for any feedback on videos that you would like to see in the future. So it's February the end of February, we're almost in March, and I have not drunk a single drop of alcohol for the entirety of this month. And obviously I intend, with all of the great things that are happening that I'm going to share with you today, I intend on carrying on for much longer. And actually, in my past, I have had a few prolonged stints of sobriety. The first one was four months that I didn't drink any alcohol, and then started again don't really know why. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. I do know why, but uh, which I will also share with you. Uh, the second stint was for three months and then started again. Uh, and the third and final stint before this fourth stint was for two whole years. Imagine, imagine, benefit number one, the amount of money <laughs> that I saved in that time and the amount of work that I got done in that time there's a positive correlation uh, between stopping <laughs> stopping drinking alcohol and becoming more productive so this this stint has been has been very much inspired by the amazing progress that i've been making with recording these videos and I hope there isn't, by the way, I hope there isn't too much wind noise here for you. I do like to record these videos outside. It feels more wholesome and there's something very wholesome about not drinking because one of the chief advantages of not drinking any alcohol is the amount of focus and presence that you have because alcohol, whether we like it or not, is enjoyable as enjoyable and as glamorous as it can sometimes be alcohol is poison it does poison the system and a lot of people say that it releases your inhibitions but i don't actually quite agree with that um it, it can appear that way on the surface but really what alcohol actually does by poisoning the system and the powers that be have known this for a long time which is why You've always associated, oh, let's go out for a beer and let's go to the pub. Let's go out for a beer and go to the football game. Well, what invariably happens at the, oh, the sun. Hey, wow, look at that. Isn't that nice? Um, invariably, what starts after a night of drinking? Well, fights. Lots of fights. Lots of repressed anger. And so while, while I can see the disinhibiting effects of drinking alcohol. There are much healthier ways of addressing uh, the, the anger that you feel about injustices, you know, over past events, that you're not in the position that you thought you were going to be in life by the point that you've reached, you know, all these different things. Gosh, that was, that's spooky. What is that? I thought I imagined I saw a ghost, a figure in the background there, but no, it's not. It's railings. <gasps> I'm a bit of a paranoid soul. It's the after effects of drinking a lot of alcohol. Um, no, fights and anger. There are much better ways of addressing your, your anger issues, injustices, and one of those is getting a therapist, getting a counsellor, getting a coach, whatever word you want to call them, really, there are people who are terrified of therapy, as a side note, really terrified. Um, and it's because they don't want to admit that they've got problems. They want to do everything on their own. They want to, they think that they can be objective with themselves and you can't. And a lot of people will numb. It's a numbing agent, alcohol, as well as being a toxin and the poison <coughs> to the system and not good, not good for the waistline. Or the, or the skin, this is, always, this is always the thing. I get much younger. Whenever I stop drinking, 
everybody, and I hate to this, everybody says, oh, you look like you've got vegan skin. It's like, Bleh. no, no, I haven't. I've got healthy man's skin from eating lots of red meat. Eat meat. Eat lots and lots of meat. I've started having steaks for breakfast. It's fucking fabulous. Um, but when you're flooded with all of those toxins, you can't be present. You sleep better. You get much more restful sleep. Um, and not only alcohol, but I've actually also stopped drinking caffeine, which I'm afraid, yeah, I'm sorry to spoil it for you, but caffeine as well, massive, massive toxin. And you can feel it, that kind of giddy feeling that you get. You are effectively being dehydrated when you drink any kind of caffeine. So I've been without caffeine as well for basically two weeks. Um, and I'm feeling the real benefits of all of it, I have to say that I know that whatever results, and this is, you see, this is the thing, whatever results that I get from what I'm investing my time in, I know that those effects are completely my own. There are no artificial crutches. There are no, you know, emotional crutches that I need to, that I need to sort of write off everything is me you know the deep the deep wells of inspiration and determination that you can experience by being really really present and yeah you do save <laughs> you save probably thousands and thousands and thousands a year at least it doesn't seem like that much when you're just having a bottle of wine and this is the thing a lot of people will they'll harbor a huge amount of shame and and secrecy hold on just going to let this wind go by hopefully this video will work but there's a huge amount of shame in in admitting that you've actually got a problem and the truth is that the vast majority of uh, drug related crime it's it is alcohol it is alcohol, violent attacks, it's all, it's, it's alcohol. So I want to urge you, if you are facing alcohol as, as an issue, to, to really question, two questions actually. Why do I need a drink? Why do I want a drink? And the second question, and perhaps even more important is why am I suppressing all of the good things in my life by putting this poison into my body? What are you avoiding? What are you medicating? What are you trying to numb? And whenever you find yourself wanting a drink, I've talked a lot about my, the exercise that I do of taking a seat and breathing and listening to my surroundings to ground me in the present. One of the great things if you really feel like you need a drink or want one, because really when it comes to something like alcohol, they're, they're, they're sort of one and the same thing, wanting and needing. Um, and people do use them as, as crutches to try and make their way through. Um, but really question, well, perhaps, it's not that you feel like you want a reward by having a drink, which is what we associate with alcohol. That's, that's the conditioning, you know, that's the pattern that is perpetuated all the time. Oh, celebrate, must have champagne. Well, no, have a fantastic, have a fantastic glass of water. Have some really fantastic food. Have, have some, try being more adventurous and considering that you have that one glass of champagne. We all know that the likelihood is that you'll have a second and third, and it's actually not that difficult. A lot of people say, oh my God, you drank a whole bottle of wine. No, it's easy. It's easy. It's really easy to do these things. But ask yourself, what are you trying to numb? And often you'll find, and this might sound like a bit of a curveball, but often what you'll find is that you're actually trying to numb feeling good 
about yourself, not feeling bad and feeling like you need something to pick you up. It's actually something often that you don't want to feel too happy. You don't want to feel too successful or you don't want to feel too satisfied with what you've done. It's often a means of people call it bringing yourself back down to earth, but actually it's not. It's not allowing you to fully enjoy all the things that you are doing for yourself. So I've had a lot, I've had a lot of problems with feeling that need to drink because often it's because, and well nearly always, the circumstances I have been in have been so extraordinarily overwhelming that you can easily seek solace in the bottle. So really do question whether you need it or whether you really want it. Ask yourself, after you've had a few drinks, ask yourself this question, how do you feel? You don't feel good, do you? And you wake up in the morning and you have to go about your day and you're slightly diminished, you're slightly lower. You can avoid all of that and you can remove the need for all of these things by really questioning what's holding yourself back. And often you will have that drink so you don't ask yourself the really important questions and you'll keep middling your way, you know, through life, drifting a little bit, not quite sharp enough, not quite focused enough, not quite awake for all of the joy and glory that is actually available to you without that drink and whenever I stop drinking I always do sound <laughs> rather sanctimonious and pious about it but I've done it enough times and I've, the evidence is in that <laughs> that life is much much better if you have to make the all or nothing decision the tree agrees the wind agrees with me the all or nothing decision that life without alcohol is much better and then what you will start to see when you allow reality to strike you between the eyes, what you will see is that a lot of really successful people have this in common that they do not drink, they don't do drugs, they don't smoke, they don't do any of these things. The crutches, you know, caffeine. Look how ubiquitous all of these things are. Even on food, you know, you'll buy not that I do actually buy ready meals. I prefer to cook my own food because I'm an excellent chef. Notice on, even on packets of crisps, ooh, enjoy this with a nice steak and a glass of red wine. Look at how often, look at how ubiquitous. Um, oh my goodness, wow, here we go. We've got some, we've got some rain coming our way. Gosh, that was good. Um, <laughs> <wee. laughs> Welcome to Derbyshire. <laughs> you can have blazing sun and then rain and wind and probably a leaf will probably strike me in the face here. Um, see how ubiquitous coffee is. Oh, it's coffee. Let's have a cup of coffee. Oh, would you like a cup of tea? Mm -hmm. Do not allow it to happen. Do not allow it to happen. Be fresh. Be you. Without without the artificial crutches. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that you've been able to hear this. I'm going to upload this anyway, but uh, yes, anyway, oh gosh, the wind is getting strong now. Thank you very much. Do like and subscribe and share to spread the message. I'm having to raise my voice now and do leave me a comment below if this resonates with you, if you've had problems with any of the above and please do leave me feedback for videos you'd like to see in the future and I will see you on the next video. Ciao for now.